Oh yeah, hey, how's it going everybody? It's yours truly, the Trick or Trey here. Today, I'm bringing you another vlog. So sit back, relax, enjoy the show. Let's do this. Okay, today we're in Raleigh, North Carolina for the Galaxy Con Raleigh event. I'm not gonna lie, I'm kind of nervous. I've never been to a convention before. Also, another known fact, today's my birthday, yeah. 72790. Bless the C33, thank the Father of both. See another year, see another day, but uh, it's hot out here. Let's head on inside. Okay. Let's see what's going on in here. Let's go this way first. Okay, it's, it's mostly vending. It's okay. okay. Oh yeah, definitely nice. It was Jack Knight 2000 was here. He would enjoy this. This ain't the only part. There's more. I'm just exploring the first part. Hmm, smoking glue guns. I wonder what that is. Okay, got some nice shirts. A little bit clustered, but we're gonna work through it. That's nice. Oh, those are nice. It's almost like I died and went to heaven. Truly nice. As soon as I can get through. Okay, let's walk down the next aisle. I think this is room one of four. I want to go to the main room where all the, the fun stuff is. Okay, got some nice posters. Those are some nice posters. Oh, nice. Okay. Oh yeah, some truly nice stuff right here. First time convention is not too bad. Oh, let me get out of his way. Hope no one minds me recording him. Okay, picture in the process. I got to stay in here for a little bit. Well, as long as you take the picture. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Don't worry. Thank you so much. Some, some more awesomeness. Got some books. Oh, it's okay. I didn't see you. Okay, I think there's two more aisles to the left. Got some nice drawings. Oh 
Excuse me. Got some nice pictures. You know, uh, keychains looks like. Nice. Oh, it's a nice supernatural poster. Oh, picture in the way, so see if I can sneak past him. Get this way. Excuse me. All right, let's see what's over here. Okay, okay. We got some badges. <laughs> Reminds me of Supernatural. I'll be back around. Yo, Jack Nine Two Thousand. If you're watching this, I'm getting I'm getting these for you. I'm literally getting these for you, so I'm gonna buy them now if you're watching this video. Alright, Mr. Jack Knife, I'm gonna hold on to this present for you while I finish the rest of this vlog. I got two badges for you. Probably mail them to you. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Some nice stuff right there. I do see it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, Mark. Oops. It's like food. Ugh, okay, I got some room. Okay, let's see what's on this side. Okay, you got some t shirts. Nice. Oh yeah. Okay, this is like the little gift shop area. Got some supernatural paintings, Miles Morales. Some pretty nice stuff. Oh yeah. Okay, let's go to another section. Ladies and gentlemen, I am Victor Dandridge, lovingly called the hardest working man in comics, and it is my honor to moderate this panel. Um, Giancarlo is on his way. Are y'all excited? Yeah. Now, obviously, you all know that things are going to be a little different from any Comic Con experience that you've ever had before. We are obviously in respect to the SAG uh, after a strike, as well as the WGA strike. Uh, we're going to have things function a little differently, okay? So unfortunately this time, as I understand it, we're not doing fan Q&A, but there will be some opportunities uh, for some of the things that you guys have submitted to be asked. We have some questions already turned in here that we're gonna bring up for you guys, and we're not necessarily gonna be able to talk about Giancarlo's extensive resume, uh, but since he's not here, I'm just curious, do you guys have any favorite pieces from him? Bark right there. Nice. But the video games out the gate. That's what I'm talking about. I like it. We're just gonna like have a whole wave fight. I love it. Yes. What the boys? I've never heard of that, but I'm teasing, I'm teasing, I'm teasing, I'm teasing, I'm teasing. No, 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 no. That's, that's awesome. So obviously what we're gonna do is, while we know his work, we're gonna get to know him. That's gonna be the goal of our conversation. So rock with me on that one. We're gonna get to know all the cool things, favorite foods, what he likes to put on the sandwiches, all the things, okay? I'm getting personal, okay? What sock do you put on first, sir? I need to know. That's how we're gonna do that. But are you guys having a good time? Yes? Is this anyone's first Comic-Con ever? Yeah. Welcome! Make some noise for them, y'all. How many of you were here last year? So yes, we're going to bring that, that energy, we're going to have that fun. Galaxy Con is the place to be and we're going to make sure that everyone knows it. So make sure that you are tweeting up a storm, sharing this all over your social medias to tell everybody that this is the coolest place of all time. Can y'all do that for me? Excellent. Next time I come up, I will have Mr. Giancarlo Esposito with me. Cool beans? I need y'all to make some noise for Mr. Giancarlo Esposito! Thank you. 
he didn't even have to pay for that. Go down. Let's stop coming. Hold on now. Hold on now. Don't, uh, don't plan for next year just yet. Slow down. Slow down. Every year. Every year? Okay, well, that's, you, you hear the people. You hear the people. Thank you. Sir, so good to see you. How was you? It was good. It was good. 12 hours of flying. It didn't, didn't hurt me too bad. Where were you going from? That's where I came from. I started in Portugal yesterday. Yesterday morning. You were a man of the world. What brought you to Portugal, if you don't mind? I took a few days off to get some sun and, and uh, uh, to meet one of my daughters and her fiance. I invited him over. He proposed to her, so she's now in the Like him? Is you he... never like it. No. Never like it. <laughs> no. It's your own daughter, and she's cute. And so I need to make sure, like, what is the vibe for how you approach a young quarter that's trying to, you know? No, I, I, I have to say, about two months ago, he called me. I was in New York, and he said, "Look, you're on the road a lot." Haven't been able to talk to you. Haven't been able to sit down and have dinner. Oops. And uh, and I thought he was going to say thanks for inviting us uh, for a few days uh, for a vacation. And instead, he said, um, "I want to ask you for your daughter's hand in marriage." So you got to love uh, a young gentleman like that who really checks in. And uh, yeah, you really do. We, we wanted, you know, we, we so we we come from a family of origin that gives us certain things, and sometimes other things are left out. Sometimes we grow through our existence feeling a little resentful that we didn't get some of the things we needed. So my, I always say, ask for what you want if you're not getting it. So what I recognize about this young man is he came from a divorced family, as I do, and his mother sort of disappeared. Uh, and so he's always yearned to have family, and he's never felt a part of a family unit. So his words to me were, I want to ask her when we are around family. And I thought that was a beautiful, beautiful thing. And so it made me think about my life and my existence and the family I've created, not only from the family of origin that I had, that I also recognize that I didn't get certain things I needed and, uh, and other things I wanted. And so this experience provided me with the experience of healing and forgiveness. Because what I realize is my people weren't able to give me all those things. Right. And I held it against them. Now I forgive them. They gave me what they could, and I took all of that goodness, and now I transfer all that I didn't get into more goodness so that I'm able to be that way with my family. The thing that I love the most about it too is not only are you are you forgiving of your family, but you're freeing yourself. You are no longer shackled by those feelings, and now you can see a better perspective to give to others. Absolutely, that's wonderful. Absolutely, you know, we we can stick with what we've always known, or we can transform that into something greater, brighter, and lighter. I love it. Oh, I love it. <laughs> Not, no pressure on them, but do we have dates yet? Or is this just a, uh, we've, we've, we've planned, they're a little overwhelmed. Okay, no, <laughs> they're so happy. They, they don't have dates yet. I did ask the question, what, how do you, so in life, what I sometimes do is see and envision what my future can be. And it, it can be a simple dream, it can be a daydream, it can be a cognitive, in the moment idea of how I would like it to go. Because that's what you put into the universe and that circle comes back to you because believe it or not, you created. So I asked, I said, what kind of wedding do you think you want? And she said, I don't know. I said, well, when you do, we as a family are here to support that and have that come to fruition for you. Do you see a small wedding? She said, oh no. <laughs> I said, okay, cool. She said, Derek's got a lot of friends. <laughs> and I said, good. But we, the more we can envision, or that I can, I can use myself as an example, what my future will be, okay? So I told my children we were away. The four daughters who did come haven't been together in a long time. And I said to them, you know, a dream of mine has always been to go to the Galapagos Islands. It's always been a dream. It's always been something I've been inviting to me to have happen. I left them yesterday morning, or whenever it was, 5 a.m. this morning, uh, in Portugal. I went to the airport, and I got an email 
from the Charles Darwin Association inviting me to the Galapagos Islands. You see how when you put it out into the universe, manifests. It really does. I love that. I love that. Okay, so seeing the world is a way that you kind of unwind. What else do you do to kind of find yourself? Do you read? Do you listen to music? What's your thing? I listen to music, but I meditate first. That's, that's my first go-to. I try to stay in silence. The silence of our existence and our world and our universe connects me to an energy that is calm. We have a world now where we're bombarded by a lot of stimuli. And I realize when I get irritated, it's because I'm paying attention to the stimuli and not to the energy of silence, of quiet. So I like to listen to some meditative music, music sometimes. But I sit in silence and I listen to my own breath in and out of my body every single day. Whether it's for 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 5 minutes, 3 minutes, I realize that I am, I am, I will, I yes, am. That's, that's where I come from. What are you The thing that I love is as you describe that, you can hear the room doing it, <laughs> falling into that silence. I feel y'all, I'm with you right there, because I know we all started breathing together at the same time. It was beautiful. <laughs> when it comes to music, you have a musical background. Your mother was an opera singer. What is your favorite genre of music? I love classical music, but I'm a, I'm a true fan of jazz music oh, wow. uh, because of its expression. Yes. Uh, you know, yeah, I, I love jazz music because, um, I, and, and classical I love because it's created and written mm -hmm. and it's masterful, can be um, give you solace, can, can be turbulent, uh, can give you energy. Uh, but jazz music I love because it's a form of expression. Uh, within the time. There's no freedom without time. So when you're practicing jazz, and I play some jazz piano, um, I study uh, saxophone, uh, you have a metronome. And I used to always hate the metronome because it would tell you whether you're in time or out of time. It's an analogy for our lives. You know, when you wake up and you feel like you don't want to move and you do anyway and something happens, you go, I knew I shouldn't have gone, gone to work today. I knew I should have waited another five minutes. That's listening to the energy of your own spirit that tells you should you go left or right. And so we have a device that does that now. And it's taken away our own ability to listen to ourselves. It took me years to check in. How, how, am I do, how are you doing this morning? How do I feel? Oh man, I'm a little bit under it. I feel low energy. What can I do to get myself, bring myself up? Well, you can you know, be inspired by uplifting thoughts. Now, not easy. None of it is easy, but to be present is to find something that connects you. And once you connect to yourself, you can connect to each other. And that's what I use in my work. If I have to be a guy who is demonstrative or a guy who is frightening and eerie and scary, I slow everything down. Because we, we as human beings, are expected to have the answer, know the answer, be quick to to show that we're one thing or another. Right. I'm smart, I'm this, I'm that, I'm the other. But in reality, if you're really steeped in your own skin, you're not pressed by the world. You're not pressed by the universe to do anything that's out of your natural feeling, that's true to you. So it's about connecting. Like we're here to connect and have fun and why I love coming to Comic Con is because we, we are, most of us have a chance to be in wonder, enchantment, joy, amusement. We get a chance to get out of our own skin, right? Like it's, it's fun to get out of your own skin because every we're expected in our lives outside of these doors to be a certain way. But guess what? You don't have to be that way. You choose to be that way. And whether you know or not, in your life, you have a choice. You, someone can ask you a question and you, you're jammed, the answer's jammed out of your mouth. And, and I now go, hmm, take a moment of contemplation. Mm -hmm. Don't try to think that I'm smart. Don't try to put anything on it. And I go, you know, I don't know the answer to that. Mm. Maybe we can find out the answer together. It's giving yourselves time and space to be you. 
And what we look for in our connection is the originality of each and every human being in this room. You have something to offer, you have something to give, and you know what? Give it, share it, be it, live it, love yourself. Lifted, okay, I don't know if you knew that or not, but you came to get uplifted, and this gentleman here is gonna he's gonna take us there. Um, that that says so much by doing just enough. And I think that is something that you exhibit as an individual, beyond just the performances, you as an individual have a presence and you take the time to create a presence. You said this is something that you like to do when you're creating character. Is there Anything that, that really kind of informed that in you growing up, to see that's how you do it. You know, it's such a great question that you ask. What informed me was a dedication. You know, I, about I, that. I think about that, and I, I just love being with you because you're so insightful because you helped me to think about my past and how I've come to be, and uh, my dedication and sacrifice for what I love to do. And that leads me to say, you know, find what you love to do, because that will that will infuse your whole life. Find out what you're being called to do, like what you feel like your gift is, and don't rush that process. You know, let it come to you. Ask, and you'll find the answer. For me, it was a dedication um, to and a commitment to work to become good at acting like I'm not me. <laughs> kind, of, kind of awkward and weird. And, and through that, I found that I could be many different people. So then, it was suggested I go to therapy. <laughs> You're schizophrenic. Um, <laughs> a joke, but it was. Uh, through my work, I found my heart and my soul and I found how to love myself, but I also found out how to connect with other people and love them, and see them for who they really are, and be present and patient enough, after I had children, to be patient enough to allow them to shine and show me who they are, and to allow myself to be available. Like, isn't part of our lives just to be available? Like, we're trained to be doers and doers and doers. So for me, it was my craft that allowed me to look inside, and then when I realized that, you know, sometimes I force things, don't allow myself to stumble, to say the wrong thing, because I'm afraid that I'll be embarrassed myself, or, or, or I'm sitting with my kids, right, and uh, they were talking, they were, so they step out of themselves sometimes, and they're all of a sudden talking about that other guy, right. that Giancarlo Esposito guy. And I'm like, oh, okay, then now, now they're now they're fangirling on me right at the table, right, amongst themselves. And um, and I said, you know, um, something about what are, what are you guys talking about a meme? And they all busted out laughing. They said, Papa, you're the king of memes, but you say you say it wrong. You don't even know how to say it. And I'm like. And, and you know, it's those moments that allow us to be human, right? It would, like, we have we lost our humanity, and how do we find it again? Well, for me, coming here helps me find it again, to be honest, truthful, um, direct, uh, really available, and not posing as someone else. So I love what I do, and I think I've had great success through finding my own heart and soul and spirit through um, the work, the contemplative work that I've done. Now look, it, it takes an effort, it t and the effort is not, that word is weird because it's like an effort, right. but the effort is just paying attention. Like it, it's not so much of an effort to just be attentive to yourself first, and then to your children, to each other in a relationship, to your job, to your work, and then to ask yourself questions. I never did this. Right. I never knew how to ask myself, am I happy? What is happiness? I'm too busy to you know, figure out if I'm happy or not. You know what I mean? We're, we're, it is real. We're in a society that we're worker bees, worker bees. But at a certain point, we've got to take a breath and go, where do I want to be? Where do I see myself? How can I create that expression? I don't care what you do in this room, whatever your vocation is. Our lives are an expression. They, they are a painting, they are a music, 
peace. Yes, they truly are. They're fluid and alive. It's ever changing, and we can make a choice to be able to choose how that goes for us and put that out in the universe. And it'll come right back. Oh my God, I love it. Make some noise for that, please. And just take some time at some point today to ask yourself that question: Are you happy today? Because he's asked himself and gives so much to all of us to enjoy by asking that question. I think we deserve to ask ourselves that. Um, family is obviously a huge point for you. And I want to know about your friends, because that's a little different, right? There's a family that you can make, but the, the friends that you choose becomes something different uh, as family. Are there any peers that you directly say, more than just we work together, but we are friends? Yeah, so many. Um, I think right away at Lawrence Fishburne. We, we've been friends for four years. Yeah, we, we love not only his work, uh, but as a human being, uh, he is just a delicious human being. <laughs> I mean, he, he, he really is. And uh, through thick and thin, I know that that's a human being I can always call and rely on. Samuel L. Jackson. You know, uh, and and I, I can, you know, ear, I can mark how relationships change and people change sure. as they become more successful or less successful or whatever it is. And Samuel has been a, a long time friend. He was my doorman in Manhattan Plaza in New York. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, back when I was 17 years old and uh, we used to talk cars because he loves cars and I love cars. Uh, we've had a long, a long, long friendship that's been uh, really wonderful as well. Um, Susan Sarandon oh. has been inspiration to me um, way back when she was um, protesting um, U.S. intervention into Nicaragua and she was someone who helped me realize that that my voice could be used for good and could be used to help change the planet and could be used to comment on things that that all of us or many of us think aren't really quite correct um, to allow people to live and, and let them live. So um, Susan taught me quite a bit as well. So uh, I, I have you know, wonderful relationships with people who are not only about themselves and the business. Now I'm in a business where, you know, and, and, and today more than ever, right. it's all about how it looks. Of course. You know, it's not about how it feels. Uh, and it's not about how much talent you have anymore. It's about, you know, what look, what, what the pose is, strike the pose, how does it look? Um, but I'm a very heartfelt human being, so for me, it's about how it feels. And um, I met a person many years ago who said, um, to me, I don't do anything I don't feel. And that stuck with me. It was really, really an important thing. And in my work, the reason I perform the way I do is because I allow myself to feel all of that. Right. And I do a lot of research to get there, and then I turn the switch on or off depending on what kind of character I have to play, uh, but I completely immerse myself. Well, isn't this how life is? Right. You immerse yourself in the commitment first to not only you know, loving yourself and caring for yourself so you can be healthy and alive and vibrant uh, to be able to serve others. Come on now. Because this is what life really is, That's right. is to be in service to each other. You know, I got off the plane and I, I realized I jumped into the aisle and there's always that mad rush and you got to get your spot. And there was a lady sitting behind me. I had noticed that she was had a cane and all this. And, and I noticed that her sister was sitting on the other side of her and her sister was in better shape than she was. Right. And, uh, and she was sitting there and every time I turned over my shoulder the whole flight, she had this beautiful angelic smile on her face. Now I know she was in pain, like her body wasn't in good shape and all this. And, and the lady behind me was literally kicking at my heels to get off the plane with her husband and two kids. And it's like, we're all going through customs to the same place. Right. And I said, just stay calm. I wanted to turn around and say, just stop. Her bag was hitting me. This, these are the situations where we grow. And I found myself getting irritated, That's right. going, wait a minute, I want, to, I want to tell her to chill, get off of my heels. And I went, how many times have you been her? Mm. Woo. Mm. How many times have you been her? And so why don't you just have some compassion and don't react in that same way. And instead, I caught this old lady's eyes who was sitting there. And what came out of my mouth? Can I help you get your bag down? Now I know her sister already got her bag. 
There's nothing right. There's nothing but I said, can I help you with anything? Can I help you get your bag down? She said, no. No, my sister has got my bag. It's good. I said, okay, is there anything you need? She said, no. She said, thank you very much for asking. See, that single little gift of giving up some kindness, putting someone else first, mm -hmm. changes your life. It changes your life. It just does. Act like y'all listen. It helped me to feel that I'm not first. And that I would want someone, uh, if I'm where she's at on a cane with a walker, to offer me some assistance or just to offer me a simple smile. Yes. Woo! The we already held you in high regard. The highest regard. You know what I'm saying? But now. Best speaker here. Sainted, okay? Sainted. But the thing, the thing that makes it so great is you saying, I wasn't always this. And you're giving yourself permission to grow and change and be who you need to be through the process, through the dedication, through the work. And I think that is probably the best message that you can give anyone in this room right now that might be going through whatever they're going through. I gotta say, you know, I, you know I'm not perfect. And, and you know, the fact that I still wish I was means I got more work to do. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, I mean you know, I'm just not. Yeah. And but I realize it's the experiential mm -hmm. moments that allow me to see yeah, yeah. the mirror and to go, oh, you know, there is no perfection. We are all already perfect. It's it's just you know, I, I, it's it's being able to really understand that and understand the situations that allow you to grow. Right. And they come at us all the time. And, and, and sometimes we're just too in a hurry to see them. But it helps you in your whole life. It helps my work, it helps me in my relationship with my children. It helps me with myself to give myself a breath of fresh air. Because this is the way we're gonna all survive together. You know, and this is the way to move forward together um, that is outside of the body. To be in service is all we have. It doesn't matter how much money you got, how many cars you got, how many houses you got, how famous you are, none of that matters. It right. is the great, the plane is the great equalizer. Because you gotta get out of that line, and there's somebody in front of you, and you gotta wait. I mean, that's it. It's the, it's the equalizer. Um, and so, I, I really love the experience of life. And, you know, part of me said, who arranged your schedule, man? You, you're off the plane, you got to come right to a Q&A, and then you got to get on another plane. Who fixed this schedule? Well, guess what? You did. Because <laughs> I wouldn't miss being here for the world. Yeah. Now, we have a few questions that came in, and with your, with your allowance, your permission, I would love to ask you. Um, so Ian wants to know, and this is a deep one, okay? This is, we're getting personal. Okay. Uh -oh. What is your favorite food? Oh, <laughs> oh my goodness. I'm a fish lover and I love salmon. Really? Yeah. Yes, I do. Yeah. Okay. Salmon over salad is just such a delicate, wonderful meal and does my body good. I love it. I love it. Now, we got a buddy, Mo, that asked you a long time ago about green or red. And you said you prefer Christmas. Christmas, baby! Is that still the case? Oh, it's still the case. Okay, so I gotta give a big shout out to Mo. Yeah, Mo, Mo, Mo! We love you. Ask those deep questions right there. Christmas, Christmas chili. Y'all understand what that is? Yeah. Okay, no. So, in what where'd you say it was, Mo? In New Mexico? Is it New Mexico? Where they put uh, hatch chilies on everything, okay? Like, everything. And you can get green or you can get red. But you like to mix it. You like I like, I like Christmas. Okay. Green and red to me. Christmas! That's what I'm talking about. Okay, so Adam Dees wants to know, how did you figure out timing and projection when playing a character? When did you do this? I mean, was this on stage? Was this, you know, you were in a quiet room and you go, wait, aha, this is how you do that. Well, you know, uh, so I did a movie with Tim Robbins years ago called Bob Roberts, uh, where I played a reporter who was modeled after a reporter named Danny Casalaro, who's not around anymore, uh, and he had, um, he had uh, multiple sclerosis, okay. and so he had an impediment. And so with each character that I play, I try to do the research surrounding what their physical bodies may have or not, if the character has an impediment. And so I went down and, and I hung out with folks who did. Uh, for me, it, it could be one line in Breaking Bad, 
I, I was a guest spot. And Vince Gilligan wrote a line that said, hiding in plain sight. And I allowed myself to be contemplative. It wasn't a line I said, it was in the stage direction. And I went, that's interesting, right? What, what piques your interest in life, in what you do? What is your inspiration? That one line yeah. made me think about human beings. Like, do I know what my neighbor does? He looks like he's going to work every day with a briefcase, but what does he really do? Right. Do I know what she does? Like, do I really know? Um, because many of us as human beings have become very good actors, mm -hmm. and we're good at hiding. And so, it could be one small thing. In Bob Roberts, it was a pair of shoes, a pair of boots. This guy walked with a limp. It was written in the script, and I had to figure out how to do that naturally. Um, and, and so life is, is we're, we're in a, an experience that's in the body is physical, right? Because we gotta move our body to get from one place to another. And as we, as we mature, we have you know, aches and pains that we have to work through to be able to, um, to feel good. So we figure out how to do that so that we can get beyond the body, like being in service. That feeling is beyond the physical body because it's goodness. You're encapsulating doing something for someone other than yourself that's good. So in my acting work, I figure out that one little thing that allows me to soar. And it's something I don't know, right? It's something that I, I, I have to let come to me, right. to think about. There are all these things that define the character in the script, but what can I bring to it? Right? It's about how we bring ourselves yes. to what we're asked to do. Mm -hmm. Yes, I have a script. Yes, I have an idea. Right. But what is my contribution? Think about this. No matter what you do in life, there's a contribution that you have that you may not even know you That's have. Right. That's right. Right? So if you, if you stay in a co contemplative, peaceful place, Ask yourselves the questions, what do I have to offer? My simple analogy for this is we go for a job interview. We get asked 50 questions, and we answer them, and we think in our heads, oh, I'm doing really well here. You know, she just smiled, I'm gonna get this gig. He just smiled, oh, I answered that well. And then they go, well, thank you, we'll let you know. And you get up and you walk out, as opposed to going, oh, wait, can I ask you a question? Oh, yeah, sure, what is that? What, what, how can I grow in your company? Mm. Well, what, what does your company have to offer me? Mm -hmm. How? Now you're taking control of your power, yeah. right? You're on an even playing field. You see, because I want to stay with this company Get up. For, for a number of years, but I, I have to know what you may have to offer. How can I grow within the structures of your company? That's right. Right? So then you're honoring you're honoring yourself, not from your ego, but from your desire to bring the whole ship up, right? And if that, if, if the interviewer looks at you cross-eyed and is not able to answer your questions, guess what? You don't belong there. You belong someplace better. There's something else for you. We have our own mind that says, I want this, I want that. But there is a universal connection, a universal brain that is each and every one of you in this room that wants more for you. Come on. More for you than you even know. So ask for it all. Cultivate your being so that you're ready when the door opens. So you're able to stand up and have courage and say, you know what, this is what I want. And you know, your company's really great, but what I see is it, it may be missing this or missing this, and I think I can help bring that to the table. And then you soar because you're not thinking about just getting the paycheck next week because you need it. That's right. God knows we need Come it. On now. You're talking about uplifting the whole organization, yes. bringing it up. And it brings up every person within that organization. That's right. You're talking out of your ego. You're speaking from spirit. You want to learn. Help me because you know I have potential. I don't know exactly how this company works, mm -hmm. but I do know that I have this great desire to be in service because what you're doing aligns with what I want to do. That's right. Let's forge a relationship. What we want in our world is all of what you have to give, your heart, your soul, your intellectual property, to be able to raise things up. And once you identify mm -hmm. that strength and power in you,
you. Once you identify that, the whole world will see it and everything will come to you. Come on. Yes, sir. Back. Let me translate one more time. Don't just be a body wherever you are. Be significant in whatever way you can. That is everything. It truly is. This is it. This is it. You know, it's be present in the now because this is what we have. And you can be valuable, you can be vulnerable, you can be a, a truly, truly a gem in the ocean. Don't look at your feet, look to the heavens, look inside your heart. Because, you know, it, it, this is how I'm living my life now. I am the happiest I've ever been Yay! in my whole life. Right now. Listen, y'all are being very respectful and I appreciate that, but let that joy out, okay? Don't hold that in. But that's what I'm talking about. Feel like that right now, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. We have time for a few more fan questions, if you don't mind. Uh, so, Lewis Owens wants to know, what is your favorite comfort food that you like to cook? French fries. <laughs> oh my gosh, just French fries with mayonnaise. Oh my gosh, I can't stick up for Yeah. And then, it's, really, it's, it's really a wonderful baking that we have patience. I have no patience. It teaches me patience. You know, let them come out, get them right, cut them up, fry them up. You can't, you can't mess with a good potato. You can't mess with Do you home meat? Your mayonnaise? Uh, I do not. I know how because okay. I've worked okay. in the kitchen, uh, but I haven't got there yet. Okay. I mean, you're talking to a man who hasn't been home in eight months. <laughs> but you know, when I get there, I'm, I'm going to take those those egg whites and he's going to start whipping them up. <laughs> now, okay, to give super these food questions, I love it. You got it. That's, that's what everyone wants to know. Okay. Got to avoid food for my next role. <laughs> got to get me to lead. <laughs> You look fabulous anyway. Uh, what kind of what kind of what kind of French fries do you like? Crinkle cut? Do you like the thin ones? Where, where you? I, I like the thin. Well, I've just come from Europe, and um, and I just th th flew through Paris. So I'll say I like the thin, crispy ones. Crisp. Salt it up with some mayonnaise. Now you're making me hungry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, okay, so Darius Story wants to know: Would you be willing to do more roles in video games? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Thank you, thank you. I would. I would. You know, look, part of my nature is to be inquisitive and to be um, excited about learning about. This is, what, this is the key to life. Learning things that you don't know. Mm -hmm. And yeah, we're, it's impressed upon us through the collective consciousness that we should know it all. But guess what? You do know it all. Everything you need to know is inside you. I love doing Far Cry 6. I had yeah. never I loved it. I loved it. It was arduous. It was strange and weird. I act with nothing with some costumes. Far Cry 6, I'm in a leotard suit. You see every part of my body, a green suit. I'm in a helmet with three cameras on the front and a light in my face. Um, I have a belt on that holds all of the electronic equipment and every part of my, my elbows, my knuckles, everything that bends, that articulated in my body has a sensor on it. All right, I'm in a room with no set and I've got to act as if there's a chair there and go sit down. It could, it, 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 I have to act through a helmet looking at you. It, it taught me how to connect through all of the elements that, that pose and in position. And it, it took me back to the theater. Wow. It was like being on a stage just like this. And, um, and it was a really interesting process. The first day I thought to myself, I hate this. <laughs> this is not my world. Uh, but, so they shoot all that, there's, the whole room is cameras, and there's also a camera, as I said, three of them, one in the center on this helmet to get all of my facial expressions. And then they shoot it in the whole room to get my physical expression. Then they take that right. up to it, it's transported to a computer where the magic really happens. Wow. Where you have over four to six to a thousand people, 400 people on site, and then things go to different countries, right. and they animate me. I mean, it is incredible. When I first looked at what they did, I said, that's real, that is me. Mm -hmm. But it was not. <laughs> and they can, they can make me look older, look younger. So my inquisitive nature 
while I was shooting Far Cry in Montreal, I wanted to go upstairs to the computer places. And I met people who spent six months on the scabbard uh, for Anton Castillo's wow. knife. Six months computer generating that, coloring it in. Um, it's, it's, it's just an amazing process. So I have a great amount of respect for, um, for the process of what goes into the invention of a video game. Uh, it's quite extensive and it's really great work and I would love to do one again. That's great. Right. Absolutely great. Right. Thanks for listening. Dedication is something small, a scab, it's not the role, but it's a part of it. That's, that's part Unbelievable. of it. Unbelievable. Beautiful. Uh, Sophia wants to know, if you were not an actor, what would be your dream job? I would be an archaeologist. <laughs> I, I'm so fascinated wow. uh, by science and archaeology and our world and things that have been left behind from ancient cultures. And so, to me, an archaeology would be something I would love. And also, uh, um, I went to the Explorer Society in New York, and um, I'm, I'm fascinated by uh, the turn of the century explorers, like Shacklin, uh, who went to the, the North Pole. To be able to explore, to me, um, is another fascinating uh, thing. So I think I'd be one of those because it tells us about not only our past but it propels us into the future um, and so I, I think recently in Arizona they found remnants of an ancient hammer like this is AD stuff before anyone knew that anyone could make you know a hammer and, and they found it in a berm that they were doing some construction on, and they've acknowledged that this is mind-blowing. So history uh, also appeals to me as well. So there would have been a lot of things that I would have done outside of being an actor. Um, again, I ask the question, because you know, young people here in the room, all right? You, you're at an age where you have you know, so many interests, and you don't know what you want to do with your life. And a lot of things are pulling you. And that's the way I was when I was young. I thought, what if I don't make it as an actor? And I thought, put that thought out of your head. There is no other choice. You will, again, here's the mantra. I am, I will, I can. You will. I was told over and over again I wouldn't make it. But when you're making a choice of what to do. Bring here right now. I want to talk to those people. You know? I mean, and I'm not like that person who's going to go, I told you so. I just knew. Like I knew, you gotta know. And if you know, that, and, and making your choice about what to do with your life, ask, ask to be enlightened and how to know. Because that knowing will pique your interest as me. I mean, I wish I had more than one life. Because I still love archaeology. I still read about ancient Egypt. I still read about kings and queens on the Silk Road. Because all that transfers to how we got to where we are now. Um, okay, sorry about that, y'all. My battery died and had to switch SD cards because I filled up the memory. But now we're heading to the main area where the celebrities are, so let's check them out. It's unfortunate that some of the celebrities I want to see are here, like Karen Gillan and S Stephen Mill. But it is early in the day, so I might catch them later. Ugh. So far, having a great time. Definitely gonna do another convention in the future. Richard Jerryfellas. We just saw him doing the uh, the last part we saw. What was that? It was like a question and answer for the fans. We just saw him. Oops, excuse me.
Okay, let's check some of the other aisles. See what we have. Billy D. Williams, come on, man. Oh, my boy Luigi. No, it's fine. Yes or no? No. <laughs> oh, Steve Urkel. He ain't there. Shit. It's like the ones I want to see on here. Okay. Got some wrestlers. Got Mouth of the South, Jimmy Hart. We got Norman Anderson. Nice. Protective covers. Yeah, I'm here too early. Okay, it's going another aisle. Let's see who's all here. Okay. Yeah, you're right. Fortunately, I don't have the money to get the autograph. Okay, I was having camera issues. Looks like everything's good going now. I'm on my second SD card now. We got the hardcore legend Mick Foley. Uh, well, I got a picture of them earlier. AEW. Orange Cassidy, Britt Baker. Oh, she ain't here. Voice actor for Ash. Uh, let's go back this way. I think there's some things I missed. Good time. See what celebrities we have here. I want to see. Of course, this aisle was almost dead. <laughs> I thought that said Justin Bieber. section oh yeah let's get 
Let's see what's on the other side. It's just like hard. Okay, I think that's the last of the celebrity, so we can look at some cool stuff. Oh yeah. Definitely don't regret coming here. Now this is amazing right here. Let's get some video of that. Yeah, that's some costumes. Which one? Convention exclusives. Okay, t-shirts, all right, all right, all right. Some paintings, it's all right. Nice. Books, books, books. More books. Some Funko Pops. Some nice, like stuff you hang on the wall. But why am I sweating? Okay, more awesome stuff. Let's get a zoom in on it. Sweet. It's probably going to be my longest vlog ever. But this is the last bit, so we're almost done. What in the BDSM? Hey, I'm in the wrong area. Okay, this is photo op. We've got some cosplayers. If you are here for a scheduled photo op with John Delancey, this is your last and finalist call. John Delancey, last call. If you have a scheduled photo op with John Delancey five minutes ago at 520, please raise your hand and walk towards the obnoxious loud microphone. That is John Delancey going once. Scheduled photo op with John Delancey going twice. Scheduled photo op with John Delancey going three times. Oh yeah. Delancey's gone. If you are here for a scheduled photo op with John Delancey, some pretty cool stuff. Okay, okay. Right, that's nice right here. That was just weird. Nice. 
Look at some more toys to collect. And I feel like I did a good job. Nice. Funko Pops. <laughs> Michael Mars masks. Teddy bears and shit. Comics. Oh shit. Funko pops again. Ooh, lightsabers. Yeah, this is the final area. We're in the gift shops. Yes, it is. And <laughs> you don't get the picture. <laughs> right, some more stuff. We got samurai swords and shit. Let's walk down this side. Yeah, I don't know how much battery life I have. I'm on my last one, so let's try and make this quick. I mean, I can't fully prepare two SD cards, four batteries. I mean, three batteries. Like I said, this is my longest vlog I've ever done. Uh, mugwood. Got some shirts. Some more shirts. We're just basically walking through and getting the cosplayer at this point, just getting a glimpse of some of the stuff they're selling like comics. More comics. Okay. Everything's going fine. Okay, let me hit that restroom real quick. Okay, it's alright to freshen up real quick, but I'm back. Just looking at all the cool stuff. Sorry, welcome to the Weeaboo. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, come on, I got this chain hook, it's coming around, I got it. Stop Comic Shop. Okay, this must be the comic session, that's all I see. Some Funko Pops. Stuff over there. Alright, yeah, we need to get out of here. How hot I am. 
licensed mystery boxes. Hmm. Some cool pictures. <laughs> Xenoblade. Got a little concession stand over there. Okay. Cool. Got some nice shirts. Pictures, trading cards. Sometimes I wish these people would get the fuck. The way. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then there are some walking through the aisles. <laughs> More comics. <laughs> Stuffed animals. Some cute pictures. More swords. Okay, okay. Some nice shit up there. Oh yeah. Oh, that's cool. Apparently, like Metal Gear Solid. <laughs> Some shirts. Okay, let's circle around to another aisle. I think it's like three aisles left. Okay, so okay, okay. They got the good stuff, classics. Alright, thank you. There goes the US Army. Yard of Dominic Glover. 
nice art. Funko Pops again. Oh, holographic pictures. Nice. He Man, Spider Man. Okay, okay. Okay, battery switch again. Okay, sorry about that. They changed batteries. We got some more swords. I will let you know right now. Okay. I don't need to. No, no, you don't. Got some cool stuff over here. More toys. Some nice collectibles. Hopefully, I can uh, squeeze it through here. Yeah, I know what you should buy. Hold on. Yeah, okay, those are comics, yeah? Yeah, the bigger ones. We already were down to the small ones or Not bad for my first convention. Of course I'm a half battery again. Got to invest a new camera at this point. Okay, some skateboards. Some nice shirts. You're gonna be so happy when you get back. Oh yeah. Paper Lab Studios. <laughs> Some good stuff in there. Hmm, Hellraiser. Some toys. I love that. We are. We are. We are. <laughs> oh, yeah. Sweet. Yeah, okay. Ooh, Deadpool. Okay, got some sick art here. Oh, Attack on Titan Toe. I see it right there. My favorite. Oh yeah. There's the army. Sweet. Crazy how I just changed batteries. I'm on half a battery. Don't worry, the vlog is almost over. I think there's like one more aisle if I got to walk now. Oh. <laughs> Hulk and Spider Man and Iron Man eating at the table. Okay, got some nice drawings. Okay, there's one more aisle after this. I think that's a wrap up. <laughs> oh, that's classic. Okay, nice shirts. Definitely nice right here. And here. 
Let's see if I can squeeze through here. Okay, the pop-up bookshop. This is the last aisle. Okay. The big bang there. Still haven't played that game, Deathloop. Nice. Okay, we are coming up to the end. Oh, Kit. Night Raider. Marines. Okay, this is Doe Trigger Tree here. Thanks for watching my boring and long ass video. <laughs> I don't think I did too bad for my first convention. Didn't get to see all the celebrities I wanted to, but hey, there's always next time. But uh, if you've been watching, please thumbs up, comment, subscribe, and uh, we'll be seeing you in the future on some more epic videos. Peace.